In this video, we look at the axes of symmetry of hyperbolas. Now, every hyperbola has two axes of symmetry. And just remember, an axis of symmetry is a line about which the graph is symmetrical. So if you were to fold along that line, you would have a mirror image on either side of that line. Okay, now, every hyperbola has two axes of symmetry. And... If we look at the graph on the left, the first axis of symmetry would sit there. Now, that axis of symmetry has a positive gradient, and the second axis of symmetry sits here. And it has a negative gradient. It is a decreasing graph. Okay. If I look at the second hyperbola on the right here, axis of symmetry with a positive gradient sits about there and the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient sits here. So each hyperbola has two axes of symmetry. They have one that is an increasing line that has a positive gradient of one. So the gradient is one. Okay so let's just write an increasing line with a positive gradient and its gradient will always be 1. Okay, Then we have decreasing lines so that form our second axis of symmetry for each hyperbola and they have a negative gradient of negative 1. So a decreasing line with a negative gradient and the negative gradient will always be negative 1. Okay now notice the point of intersection of these axes of symmetry. The significance of the point of intersection is that it is also the point of intersection of the asymptotes. Okay, so that is very helpful to us when we have to find the equation of the asymptotes or the equation of the axis of symmetry. So I'm just going to make a note there. So point of intersection is is also the point of intersection of the asymptotes. Okay, so if we wanted to know the coordinates of the points of intersection of the axes of symmetry, the x-coordinate is given by the vertical asymptote, And the y-coordinate is given by the horizontal asymptote. Okay. Right. Then you will be required to find the equations of the axis of symmetry of a hyperbola. And there are two methods. I'm going to show you one and how to use it and then just explain how the other one works. Okay. So... You could be asked to find the equations of both axes of symmetry or just one. And if they just want one, they'd say find the equation, give the equation of the axis of symmetry with a positive gradient, okay? Or, you know, the equation of the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient, right? So if we want to find the equation of the axis of symmetry with a positive gradient, we use the formula. So let's just write positive gradient. y equals, and then m is 1, so there's going to be an invisible one, and then my bracket, x plus p plus q. Okay, now this x plus p is what I have in the denominator of my equation of the hyperbola. So I'm going to write that up there, denominator. In 
function equation. And the plus Q is the Q value from the equation. Okay, if I wanted to find the equation of the negative gradient, sorry, the equation of the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient, I use the formula y equals, now the gradient is always negative 1, so I have negative invisible 1 in front of the bracket, and then it's the same. The bracket is x plus p, which is the denominator of the function, and then I add q. Okay, so let's apply this to this graph and find the actual equations of these axes of symmetry. So I have for the axis of symmetry with a positive gradient, y equals the gradient is positive 1, and then x plus p. So the denominator, which is x minus 1, so my p value is negative 1. Then I add the q value, which is 2. That's all, and then I simplify. This becomes x minus 1 plus 2, which gives me an equation of y equals x plus 1. If I want to find the equation of the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient, I use the formula y equals, now the gradient is negative 1, so invisible 1 there, then the brackets. In the brackets, I have the denominator of the equation, of the function, and then I'm going to add 2. So I distribute the negative, so I have negative x plus 1 plus 2, and that simplifies to an equation of y equals negative x plus 3. Okay. Now, the second method that can be used to find the equations of the axis of symmetry is to use the equation for a straight line, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And if you're looking for the equation of the line with a positive gradient, you would insert m equals negative 1. Or, if you're looking for the equation of the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient, you would simply use m equals negative 1. Okay, then we also usually, when we find the equation of a straight line using this formula, have to substitute the coordinates of one point. Now, the significance of this point that we have to substitute is that it is the point of intersection of the axes, sorry, of the asymptotes. So point of intersection of the asymptotes. So again in this case um, our x value is the value of the vertical asymptote and the y value is the value of the horizontal asymptote. So if you were to substitute the gradient and this point you would be able to simplify and write it in standard form y equals mx plus c and you would find your equation of the axis of symmetry. And this is also where these formula come from. Okay. Right, so let's just apply what we have learned there. So I'm going to use the first method just for a different graph. Okay, so if we have to find the equations of the axis of symmetry of this graph, I have two equations. One is for the axis of symmetry that has a positive gradient, and I would use the formula y equals the positive gradient, and then x plus p plus q, and I substitute. So in the brackets, I substitute the denominator. So I have x plus 1, and then I add q, which is negative 2. And simplifying this, I have x plus 1 minus 2, that simplifies to x minus 1, y equals x minus 1. If I want to find the equation of the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient, I use the formula y equals negative x plus p in brackets plus q. And I substitute y equals negative, the x plus p is x plus 1 plus q, so I add the q value, which is negative 2. Simplifying this, I have negative x minus 1 minus 2, 
which simplifies to negative x minus 3. The final thing I want to show you is how to find the points of intersection of axes of symmetry and the hyperbola graph. Okay, so the points of intersection I'm talking about in the case of this graph would be these two points. Now, before I look at how to find those, the coordinates of those points, I want to tell you something very important. The distance between these points of intersection is the shortest distance between the arms of the hyperbola. Okay, I'm going to say that again. It is very important. So write it down, learn it. Um, it will become very useful to you um, in the more difficult exam type questions and also then in matric. The distance between the points of intersection of the axis of symmetry and hyperbola graph is the shortest distance between the arms of the hyperbola. And the way we would find the distance is to use the distance formula and substitute in the coordinates of the points of intersection. Okay, now to find the points of intersection, we can use simultaneous equations. I have the equation of the hyperbola. And if I know the equation of the axis of symmetry that cuts the graph, because you will have observed that only one of the axis of symmetry actually intersects the arms of the hyperbola. The other one doesn't. So I'm only interested in the axis of symmetry that is actually intersecting the graph. Okay, so we need the equation of the axis of symmetry that intersects the graph. And that is the positive gradiented um, axis of symmetry. So in my brackets, I would have the x plus p, which is the denominator of the equation. And then I'm going to add q, which is 2, and this simplifies to x minus 1 plus 2, which is x plus 1. Okay, so there's my first equation. This is my second equation. I need to solve them simultaneously. They are both solved for y, so I'm going to equate them. So I have x plus 1 equals... 1 over x minus 1 plus 2. I have an equation with a fraction now, so I'm going to multiply by the lowest common denominator, which is x minus 1. So I have x plus 1, which I'm going to multiply by x minus 1. Then I have 1 over x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 1 simplifies to 1 plus, and then I have 2 times the denominator x minus 1. Multiplying this out to get rid of brackets, I have x squared minus 1, because those brackets give me difference of squares, equals 1 plus 2x minus 2. Write this in standard form and simplify. So I have x squared minus 1 minus 1, which is negative 2, and then I'm going to add 2, so that gives me 0 as a constant, and then I'm going to subtract 2x. This is easy to factorize. I take out a common factor of x and I'm left with x minus 2 equals 0. So solving for x, I have x equals 0 or x equals 2. Okay, so those are the x coordinates. And if we look, so the x coordinates of the points of intersection, here we have the point with, where x is 0, here we have the point where x is 2. But I also need the y coordinates. To find the y coordinates, I substitute back into either one of the equations, and I'm going to use equation 2 because it is the simpler one. So, if x equals 0, y equals 0 plus 1, which is 1. So my one point of intersection has the coordinates 0, 1. If x equals 2, then y equals 2 plus 1, which is 3. So the other point of intersection has the coordinates 2, 3. And if we check the graph, that is correct.